Hello, my wonderful friends. Meg is here on a beautiful day in Asha. Come to you from the beautiful castle in Sacred Mountain. And today I want to talk about spiritual season. So let's head inside. Hello, my wonderful friends. Welcome. Today we're talking about spiritual seasons. And my spiritual season is changing. And as you know, I've been living up here in the mountains. I had a long beard that I've trimmed off and I lived as a hermit. I spent a lot of my time in meditation and, and prayer and seeking spirit because that was the season I was in. And I had a lot of people fight me about it saying, you can't do that. You, you have to stay engaged in society. And I understand what they're saying, but I do believe there's a time to withdraw, to draw strength, to get our minds right and our vibration right so that we have something to offer others and and my friends the time for me has come as you've seen i i trim my long beard and i miss it so much but the the reason is i'm headed to california and, and in california i don't want to stand out i'm starting again a new business and and, and a different life and I, I wanted to share with you my book still pulls of the mind see that cave on the cover. I'm actually moving uh, to a house that sits on the cliff that is above this cave here. I'll be looking at this cave every day and I thought, how beautiful is that? I never dreamed in a million years I I'd be living at this place where my book cover came from. I feel so blessed, my friends. And also uh, with relationships, you know, I'm thinking, do you know what? Maybe I would like to have a soulmate, you know, I, I haven't led anyone in my life for so long. And, and for many reasons, again, like I said, I wanted that time just to spend with spirit. And, and then also, as I get older, and, and I've had a daughter now, I know what I want for her. I want someone to treat her like she's the world, she's a princess or what, whatever she wants to be. And, and they're going to give her that. And, and my friends, uh, it takes a very uh, unselfish act and it takes sacrifice and you have to be in the right place to do that I know that now before when I was a young man that was one of my least concerns I was more obviously concerned about the physical and uh, but now I, I want to be able to reach someone on a heart level and, and so this new season of my life I still will meditate uh, but it won't be as much. You know, I think of, we talked about Abraham Hicks. I'm a big fan of hers. And she says to only meditate for 15 minutes a day. And at a time, I thought that was ridiculous. I spent way much more time. Sometimes 24 seven, I was just in that place, but I was in a situation in an atmosphere here that I could do that. You know, one of my dreams uh, was to be a wizard in a castle. You know, I used to love the movies like Edward Scissorhands, where he lived, you know, as like a normal community, but he was up on a hill in a castle and uh, that kind of that gothic look and feel. And, and I'm living that and it's, it's awesome, it's beautiful, but it, sometimes it's, it's very disconnected and alone. And that was a season. Now I'm going to California where I love to surf and my friends and family are there. I love the Angels the baseball team. Uh, I love to go to Disneyland and, and there's just so many different things that you can be involved in. And, and my friends, that's kind of, I guess if the gist of this message is if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling disassociated from the world, don't use your spirituality to hide from the world. Use your spirituality to get your vibration right, to find peace and that unconditional love and joy and, and hearing from spirit, and then get excited about living in form and matter and in time and space because here there's amazing things. I mean, you can surf and swim in the ocean and, and you can uh, ride skateboards and bikes. You can fall in love. You can have children. You can hike in the mountains. You can breathe fresh mountain air. You can dream about things and then start working towards them to achieve them. And, and it, it's fun and it, it, we need that. Don't think of the physical and form as something evil. And I think a lot of people think that. They're always just trying to 
run away uh, to the spiritual. My friends, if you wanted to just stay in the spiritual, you would have never came into time space. You wanted to come here. Uh, of course, one to raise the evolution of the earth, to raise the frequency, but also to have fun, get excited about something, start working towards something. Uh, and my friends, enjoy this beautiful life. Let's read from Asha. Uh, two verses come to mind. Um, Asha 16, it, it says, so go Ashavan, truth knower. So now you're vibrating, right? You know Asha, you know the highest truth. You're vibrating, right? It says, uh, go in truth and enjoy this wonderful life, knowing you are God's thought, living in God's idea, perfection. And then Asha 10 also came to my mind. Let, let me flip over that real quick. It says, for when the truth is told, the lie is exposed for what it is, nothing. Where health is, sickness is not to be found. It's like turning on a light in a dark room. There's no big fight, the light just fills the room and the darkness is gone. My friends, when we get full of that truth, of that light, our world's gonna be different. There's nothing to be scared of. You don't have to judge the future by the past because you're a different person, you're a different energy. I wrote this in here, it says, truth reverses the evidence of material sense. Every quality and condition of mortality is lost, swallowed up in immortality when we hold and vibrate that truth and light. It says, do not bow down to form and matter. Spirit makes form. When you honor the supremacy of Ahura Mazda Asha truth, you control form and matter. What energy are you creating with? My friends, when we spent that spiritual season of the hermit, right? For me, it was growing the beard, spending my time in the mountains, away from everybody and everything, away from the news and TV, and just hearing from spirit. Now, my friends, I'm vibrating right. My spiritual world is right. And now my material world is coming into order. Let's uh, shuffle up the cards here and uh, see what we get. <laughs> okay. I don't want to scare you guys, but I get the Four of Swords all the time. My friends, again, this is going inside. It's finding that truth, vibrating that truth. That's that truth we're holding that we can only find inside of us. But you can't find it outside of you. Okay, Six of Wands. My friends, this is victory. This is the laurel wreath riding in on the white horse. This is victory. And, and this is telling us that if we'll go inside, if we'll spend that time and that season in meditation and alignment and vibration, that victory is coming. Okay, and the Queen of Pentacles, absolutely beautiful. My friends, this right here represents to me, at least right now, sitting on your throne. And the pentacles, it represents material things, doesn't it? And that's kind of what we're talking about. We've done the spiritual work. Now we're ready to live in the material, enjoy the material, uh, be on the throne, creating. We're not just um, victims of fate. We're, we're creators, powerful creators, because what we vibrate we create. So simple, my friends. So beautiful. I love spending this time with you. If, if you enjoy it too, please let me know. It, it touches my heart when you guys reach out to me and let me know that you love me too. And as you always know, I love you. I love you. I love you.